Hi everyone, this is Nightfighter22 here. I hope you guys are all well. And today what we're going to be talking about is the Rai Lopez or the Spanish opening. Yes, I did make one of these videos before, uh, about a year and a bit ago. Um, and it just wasn't in very much detail, so I'm going to remake it. This is a request from a guy called Rayan. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce his name anyway. Um, who requested for me to do a tutorial on the Spanish or the Rai Lopez opening. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. Also coming up, there's going to be um, there's going to be two videos on two different traps you're going to find in the Rai Lopez, which are the Morsma trap uh, and the Rai Lopez fishing pole trap. This is just going to be an introduction to this opening. Um, I'm going to cover into detail to about the seventh or eighth move, so don't worry if I don't go through everything because there's going to be more videos in detail about this opening. But I'm definitely going to give you enough content so you can start experimenting with it and playing it and hopefully winning some games with this opening. Okay, so if you're unfamiliar how it starts out, white just starts off with the most common move, pawn to e4. Second most common reply from black is pawn up to e5. This is what you know, you're most likely going to see. Knight to f3 is what you're going to play. And then nine times out of ten, you're going to see the old knight to c6. Very common position in chess. And actually, the most common uh, way to continue is the Rai Lopez, which is bishop out to b5. Now, in this position, there are two main things you can do. Um, there are two replies you're going to get from the black opponent. One of them is a6, and the other one is knight to f6. I'm not going to go through any of the others because most of the moves are fairly dubious. You know, they're, they're stuff that, you know, like knight from g to e7 or whatever, and just stuff which doesn't give black a good score. So in this introduction video, I'm going to go through the two main moves. As I said, a6 is by far the most common move. The whole idea with a6 is that it's basically kicking this bishop. It's putting the question to the bishop. Um, a lot of people might wonder in this position, can't the bishop take the knight and win a pawn, right? That's the whole point of this bishop being here. White is playing his bishop out to b5 to put pressure to a knight. And he's saying, hey, if I take your knight, I'm going to be able to win this pawn because this pawn is undefended. So surely, if black was just attacking it with a6, wouldn't this basically lose a pawn? Now, it actually wouldn't, um, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, taking here is a mistake. It actually leads to quite a low win percentage for white. So bishop takes, if your black a player takes back the d pawn, and you get her ahead and take knight takes e5, um, black can actually play queen down to d4, and it is not a nice position for you. Basically, he's attacking the pawn and he's attacking the knight. There's going to be no way you can defend both of them. Uh, you're going to have to save your knight and you're going to drop down the pawn so you don't win any material. And actually, it comes off a lot worse. Let's just say you move the knight back to f3. You get queen takes e4 check now. Um, and the only way you can block that check, if you remember you can't castle out a check, uh, is by playing queen to e2. And after this queen trade, you know, not only um, is black more... You know, he's got more of these scopes with these bishops. Not only has he got the bishop pair left, but also your king is not castled, which means it would be very vulnerable to attack, you know, especially with this bishop pair. So it's definitely a mistake to go ahead and play bishop takes c6 on e4. Instead, the most recommended move, and by far the most common, is bishop back to a4. Now, what you're doing with bishop back to a4 is you're still keeping the tension on this knight, but just moving it back to a safer square. Uh, at which point you'll probably see your opponent play knight up to f6. Um, at which point the main move is just to castle kingside. Now, in this position, say if the, the black opponent is most likely just to make a development move like bishop to e7. There's a trap that a lot of people fall into. Um, say, for example, if I played rook to e1. This is what you want to do, getting the rook on the open e-file and protecting this pawn here. Say, for example, the black player now castled. There's one key difference with this position is that the e4 pawn is defended. So now you can go ahead, trade off this knight. You play knight to c5, bam. Queen to d4 does not work because you're just moving your knight back to f3. Queen's got to retreat and you're up a pawn. You can now continue with knight to c3, just defending this just defending this pawn, giving another defender. Moves like d4, and you have a very comfortable game. 
Um, so yeah, that is that's why it's a mistake to castle after you put your rook there. Instead, after bishop bishop to c7 and rook to e1, a lot of players might play pawn out to b5. This is attacking the bishop, and obviously the only way you can save it is just to move it back to b3. A lot of players get worried uh, about moving this bishop, you know, because obviously moving it from f1 to g5, back to a4, and now into b3. And a lot of players get worried about moving the bishop three times in the opening. But if you look at this diagonal, it doesn't often get used by a bishop. And say after your opponent castles here, this bishop is a very strong, uh, um, you know, having this diagonal exposed against the king. Really strong attacking piece. Uh, most black players will now continue with d6. Uh, sorry, it's white's move. Say knight to, knight to c3 and d6. And as you can see, this bishop's very strong. It's contributing to that d5 square, which is the critical point in the game. Uh, this is what Bobby Fischer used to do. He just used to love putting his light square bishop on the b3 square and just have it harass the king the whole game. So you've got no worries about pushing your bishop back to b3. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you might not see uh, a6. You might see something completely different. You might see knight to f6, which is the other main move. This is called the Berlin defense, um, a slightly different approach. The last one we looked at was basically the closed Ray Lopez. Um, but from here again, what you want to do is just castle. The whole strategy with the Berlin defense is this knight is going to go all out and he's going to go ahead and capture your pawn. Uh, this is called the Rio Gambit variation of the Berlin defense. From here, what you want to do is play d4. It's the most recommended move. And what you'll notice is they can't really take here. Um, if there's a take, then rook to e1 is played. And there's this awful pin on this knight. You know, if you look at this position, how is um, how is that knight really going to be saved? I mean, you could play something. You could play something like queen to e7, but just look at this pressure on this knight. You've got to be really, really careful. After a move like queen to d3, you know, how is the knight really going to be protected? D5 possibly, but it just turns into a right old mess, and it's not very convenient for the black player. Um, instead, after knight takes d5. If you go ahead and play d4, um, attacking this pawn, it tends to a more stable position. <clears throat> yeah, indeed, in the position. Um, a lot of the time also... Oh, that's my cat coming in. Yeah, a lot of the time also, you know, you just see simple development here. Um, rook to e1, attacking this knight. You're going to have a lot of pressure on this file, and it's going to be very, very useful for you. Okay, so that was pretty much all I had to say for the first variation of the Rai Lopez. As I said, I will cover it in more detail. Um, I'm going to make some more videos about that, particularly the Berlin defense variation. I haven't quite covered it in a lot of detail there. The main thing you need to get started is just learning these variations with A6, because any experienced player will play that more times than not. Also, um, you know, if many people haven't seen it, A6 is generally what is played from the black perspective. Just because this bishop looks a little bit annoying and they want to do something about it, I think with knight to f6 you need to know a bit more theory in order for the black person to play that. So that's definitely what you're going to see more of. Um, just looking at the chess.com statistics, a6 is played 58,000 times and knight to f6 is played 9,000 times. And that's from a game of Grandmaster Database, which they know what they're doing. Okay, so thanks very much for watching the tutorial, everybody. As I said, I will be back with more Rai Lopez. The opening goes a lot deeper than that, and I've got a lot more theory I'd like to share with you. Uh, but I wish you good luck playing chess. I hope this helped, uh, Rayan, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.